All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I've been going through a series of video presentations I'm creating for the Rankin Technical College AWD or Application and Web Development 1111.NET Framework with Web Databases class. The textbook that we're using for the class, as shown on the screen right now, is ASP.NET MVC with Entity Framework and CSS by Lee Naylor. So far in this book, if we quickly look at the contents at a glance, we've gone through the first six, I'm sorry, the first five chapters. Chapter one was building a basic MVC website, pretty simplistic. Chapter two, creating views, controllers, and a database from models classes. Chapter three, searching advanced filtering and view models. Chapter four, more advanced data management. And we just finished up with Chapter 5, Sorting, Paging, and Routing. Now, what I want to mention to you is Chapters 6 and 7, which we're going to go over next. If you look at the two of them together, they represent over 170 pages of the book. In fact, they represent closer to, closer to, um, a third of the book, between a quarter and a third of the book. The reason I'm telling you that is I would imagine um, if we look right now, and this is a window into Jeff's world here, this is what we've done so far. We had chapter one, we had one lecture. Chapter two, we had two lectures. I'm sorry, chapter two, we had four lectures. Chapter three, we had two lectures. Chapter 4, we had four lectures. Chapter 5, we had three lectures, which means that's about 14 lectures right there if I did my math right. All right. But my guess is when we get to chapters 6 and 7, we're going to have something like about, and I don't know this for sure, but my guess is we're going to have something like probably around maybe up up to 10 lessons, parts, whatever you want to call it, for each of these. I don't know. All right. And again, all I'm saying is there's going to be a lot. All right. So I'm just kind of getting this ready right now. Let's do one more here. So I'm, I'm planning for up to, as mentioned, maybe even 10, somewhere like that. All right. And my guess is, if this is not going to be the kind of thing where I'm going to be able to do a chapter in a day, I might, but we'll do, oops, we'll do the best we can with what we've got. All right. So chapter six, which starts in our book on page 107, is, as mentioned, what we're going to be doing next. Managing product, product images, many-to-many -many relationships. This chapter covers how to create a new entity to manage images, how to upload image files using HTML forms and associate them with products using a many-to-many -many relationship, and how to save images to the file system. This chapter also introduces more complex error handling to add custom errors to the model in order to display them back to the user. All right. The product images used in the chapter to seed the database can be found in Chapter 6's code download available from, from APRESS. So,
So there's the book, table of contents, etc., etc., downloads. And my guess is what I'm going to be looking for here, 1, 7, that's not good, 2, 11, Well, what I was looking for here were the downloads for Chapter 6 that had all of the um, all of the images I think we're going to be using. Paging and routing about this chapter, about this book. Well, I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. But what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to jump up in here to the next chapter. You'll see why hopefully in a minute. Uh, 105, something like that. There we go. Chapter 6 is source code. There, that's what I want. Well, that's what I want. I want that code, but I'm not sure how to get it because I haven't been doing anything with their code in the entire book. I've been creating my own. So we'll have to go back and take a look at that in just a bit. But let's, let's muddle on. To keep the examples as simple as possible and so you can follow this in your own projects, much of the code is based on Microsoft's sample Identity 2.x code. If you want to view this sample code, open a new empty project and install this package into it. Do not install the Microsoft sample identity code into the baby store project. So they show what you can do. I'm not going to do that. All right. Well, I guess I should. So it says we can do this by choosing Project, Manage NuGet, yeah. open a new empty ASP.NET project and install this package into it. All right, so let's open up a new project. And it says if you want to do this, do, 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 do. sample ident identity 2x code. All right, we're just going to call this Identity then, which is kind of a dumb name, but that's what I'm going to use. So, File, New, Project. Again, I'm just going to call this Identity. A new empty project, which I probably didn't do right there, or maybe I did. So again, this will be called Identity. We're going to choose Empty with nothing in there. OK. That should build the empty project for me. And you know what? I'm jumping into Chapter 7, so I don't even know what I'm doing. Let's go back to page 107, all right? I've already gone nine minutes, so it's silly for me to start, start over again. Okay, so we're going to do this. For this project, we're going to store the image files within the web project using the file system. What the heck does that mean? Well, bottom line is this. 
if you look up on the screen right now, and let's look at our BS project here, BS2. What the author is saying is in this content area here is normally where you will save your images. That's just standard and the standard way of doing it for an ASP.NET project. So that's what we're going to do. When they say save, save them to the file system, that's what the author is talking about. So to begin this, let's create a new class in the models folder that is called product image. So models folder, I, this one right now, in fact, I can, let's save all this and then let's close this class. We'll use that in the next chapter. Sorry about that. All right, models chapter or models folder right mouse click add class this is called product image there it is We want to use our annotations. All right. And All right, I don't know if we're going to use these or not, but we'll just, for now, we'll leave them there, okay? All right, you are probably wondering why we added an extra class that basically maps a string to a, project, to a product rather than simply adding a collection of strings to the product class. This is a common question raised by developers when using Entity Framework. The reason why is because Entity Framework cannot model a collection of strings in the database. Rather, it requires the collection to be modeled as we have done with the string stored in a class. Okay. Now, update the store context to add a new property for this. Copy. Go into our DAL, store context, come down to here, paste that in. Okay. Next, create a migration to add the new product image entity as a table by entering add migration product images into the package manager console. Probably first would be a great idea to save. All right. There's our NuGet manager right there. I'm supposed to paste. Oh, I forgot. Oh. When I do that and I copy like that, which I should not be doing, all right, it doesn't grab this or it didn't. Maybe that was just something I did. So they asked for the name. What was it? Product images, one word, right? Product images. Whoopsie. Product images. And if we go and take a look into our migrations folder, See, now we've got product images here. It's all fine. And then we have to run the update database command to update the database and add this new table. Copy. Oops. Okay. Just update hyphen database. Not databases. Database. There we go. All right. Boom. 
Now what we should notice if we go into our app data and double click on the baby store and go to tables, we now have another table here called product images. And if we look at the product images table and we open up the table definition, we can see that there is a primary key of an ID and a file name. And literally, that's it right now. Fine. Let's close. Let's close. Okay. Before we can upload any images, we need to somewhere to store them. As stated earlier, we're going to store them on the file system. All right. So create a new folder under content named product images. And then under that, create a new folder named thumbnails. So, there's our product images, and underneath that, we are to create a new folder that is called thumbnails. All right, so we now have both of those. The product images folder will hold the uploaded images and the thumbna thumbnails rather will hold the smaller images. The thumbnails. All right. Okay. Defining reusable constants. We are going to be referring to these folders in various files throughout the project. Therefore, we need a way to refer to them. To do this, we're going to add a new static class named constants in the base of the project and add some constants to it. So, right-click on the project in the Solutions Explorer and choose Add Class. So, right-click on the project itself and choose Add Class. All right. The new class is supposed to be called Constants. There it is. You can see that it's been added, and it's been added. Right there. So it is right under the project. All right. I'm going to just highlight all this and replace it with this there it is all right and as the author mentions we'll now refer to the constants class when we need to reference the file paths where the images are stored the class is declared as static so we it does not need to be instantiated prior to being used the tilde here basically means from the root of the project, just so you're aware of that. All right. Now that we have constants defined globally, add a constant for page items as highlighted. Update the index method of the products controller class to use this new constant by deleting the current page items constant from it and using the new constant in its place. So we're going to have to come there and do that and that. All right. There is a lot, 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 lot of code that we're going to be adding in this chapter. Okay. All right, so the index of the product controller class. There is the index right there. And 
and we want to jump down right after the switch statement and make sure it says this. So right after the switch, there it is. And this page items, I think we are not using anymore. All right. Since we removed page items, this is no longer working. And it's been replaced with this. All right. Now I could remove those, and I probably should because I am introducing some code bloat into here. But I wanted to make sure that that those were all there at least for a while, so you can see them and see what's going on here. Okay, that moves us up to page 110. And the author says right here, next, build the solution and then add a product images controller and its associated views. Do this by right-clicking. Well, let's build the solution first. Remember, if we don't build the solution first, that quite often what's going to happen then is when we go in and try to add the controller, we'll get an error message. All right, so we're on controllers, add controller. We'll leave it right there. Back, let's cancel that. Let's just do it from here. All right, right clicking on controllers, choose add followed by controller. Yes, I should have left it up there. MVC controllers with views using the entity framework. Add, con oopsie. Add controllers, views with entity framework. Let's double check that. Controller MVC5 with, view, with views using entity framework. Click Add. It brings this up. Next, add a controller named Product Images Controller. All right. That Product Images Controller should specify product image as the model class. And I believe store context is correct the way it is. And make sure the data class is store context. Ensure all the options for the views are checked. So in other words, it should look like this. And because I'm, I'm starting to get into the very heavy stuff in this, I'm going to do a print screen. I'm going to come down here. I oft times do this just so I can double check things. Windows Accessories, go down to Paint, paste that in. Just grab what I need here. Copy, File, New, Do Not Save, Paste. All right. So now, I can check and make sure that what this says and what this says are the same thing. All right. Product image, baby store models, store context, 
all three product images controller. Hot doggy. Looks good to me. Click add. And that will add here. I will now have a product images controller. And it will also add a folder in my views, which has got all the stuff in there also that I'm going to end up using as we go on. Again, this should be really virtually nothing new here. Right, because we've done this before. There's our product images controller and under views, there's our product images. Good. Once created, add a new product images control, a new product images controller class should appear. You just saw it. And the associated CRUD should appear. You just saw that. All right. The first thing we're going to do is to modify the create method and the create view associated with project images. If you start the website and navigate to product images create, you'll see a page closely resembling the category create page. It allows the user to enter a string, which is not what's required. What is required is a create method and a create view capable of uploading a file, saving it to the disk, and adding the file name to the database. Well, let's look and see what we currently have. So we'll go to Product Images Create. All right, so let's save, run this. Once this comes up, we'll come in here and we'll say Product Images Create. And the author says, this is what we get. Okay. Basically, we're allowed to come in there and enter a file or a file name. To start with uploading files, we're going to add some methods to the product images controller class to validate the size and format of the upload and resize images to a more appropriate size for displaying in a website. Let's break that down. We're going to validate the file size. I believe that the maximum size we're going to allow for an image is going to be 2 meg. In addition, we're going to make sure that the image that we're trying to add is either a GIF or a ping or a JPEG JPEG or a JPEG JPG. Now, that by itself will not guarantee that nothing bad gets into the system. It is still possible for someone to put in, it is still possible for someone to put, put uh, malware or something bad into an image. We're not handling that right now. We're just making sure that it's one of the allowed types and that it's 2 meg or less. So it says add the following method below the dispose method. So dispose is probably going to be at the bottom. You know, I, that's when we're all done. So there's dispose. All right, so at the very bottom here, we're adding this. All right. Now I just basically just told you what that's about. So that there shouldn't be anything that's in this validate file that's a big surprise to you. All right. As it says, it returns a Boolean and it takes an input parameter named file of the type HTTP posted file base. The method obtains the extension of the file and checks to see that it's allowable and that it's between 0 bytes and 2 meg in size. If it is, it's going to return true. Otherwise, it returns false. It says one point to note is rather than loop through the allowed file types array, we use, a, we use the link contains operator to shorten the amount of code that's needed. Right there. But it could have been done the other way as well. We could have checked it that way. <clears throat> Next, add a new method below the validate file, which will be used to resize images if required, and then save them to disk. So 
So that's below the validate file, which is right here. This isn't pretty the way the author has put this in here, as you can see. All right. Now we've got this, and my guess is under the fix, we'll need a new using. There we go. Boom. That's been fixed. To ensure that the code compiles, make sure that you add the, the using statement using system.web.helpers, which should be the one that I added at the top. System web helpers, there it is. All right. The save file to disk method, which we have right there, takes an input parameter file, again, of the type HTTP posted file base. Then it uses the web image class to resize the file if the width is greater than 190 pixels and it saves it to the product images directory. It then resizes the image down to 100 pixels in width if needed and saves it to the thumbnails directory. Now that we have the helper methods in place, we need to modify the create method of the product controller class to upload files when a product is created. All right, so we're gonna do all this in just a minute, but before we do, as the author mentioned, we're using this. So it probably would be a good thing to very quickly bring that up here and take a look at it and see what it is. All right. Serves as the base class for classes that provide access to individual files that have been uploaded by a client. All right, and my take on this is what we're saying is, hey, we're letting the system know that we are using the um, content folder and the product images folder underneath that to hold our images. Okay, all right. First of all, rename both create, rename both create methods to upload. Okay. Rename both create methods to upload. So let's go find those. There's the first one. And that will become upload. And here is the second one. And that will become upload. All right. Never done that before, but interesting, if nothing else. Update the HTTP post version as highlighted in bold. All right, so start by bringing in all this. Now we only have part of the page, so I'm sure it's going to um, it, it's going to end up giving me errors after I pull after I put this in here. Let's just grab all of it. So we've got product. Public action upload. I'm going to grab all of this. Then I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go all the way up to the HTTP post. Again, this is only partially complete. Don't let that throw you. All right. So. Right. Then we want to grab all this, copy that to the clipboard, paste that in. We're still not done. All right. Now notice, put this on two lines here.
again this on two lines. figure out why we've got two of those but let's see if there's okay that's going to go here that'll go here and here here let's hit enter we're not done yet all right So we want all of this. Hopefully then we're finished. And it looks like our error messages have gone away. That's a good thing. So, as always, the author will explain everything that's in here. But let's, let's go back and just take it from the top here. Okay? Where are we? Right there. So, the first change we have made is to remove the bind section completely because the file ID is set up by the database and we're not going to set the file name property manually. Okay, we've then removed the product image parameter and added a new input parameter, HTTP posted file base, which we've already talked about. This parameter is a file submitted by the user and will be populated from a file upload control in the view. We're not relying on model binding in this method by performing assignment of the data manually. So the method does not require the product image parameter. Rather, we create a product image object in the method when adding the image to the database. There is an if statement that's been added in here to check that the user actually entered a file name. So you only want to do this if it's not null. If they have not, we want to set, we want to add an error and inform them that they have not entered. So if we get down to here, they've not entered a file name. So we're letting them know that. All right. If the user has entered a file name, we check to make sure that it's valid, i.e. it's not above 2 meg. All right, that's that validate file that we looked at before. If that was not valid, then a model error again will be added, saying the file must be a GIF, a PNG, a JPEG, or a JPEG, and it must be 2 meg or less in size. Finally, if all that stuff worked, a new product image is going to be created. That's when we're down here, if everything was valid. A new product image is created with a file name property set to the file name property of the submitted file. The user is then redirected to the index view. Otherwise, if there were errors, the upload view is returned and displays the errors in the code. All right, and that's the, the explanation that's here is what I just read to you. All right. Now that we have updated the controller, we need to update the view file so that it includes a control to submit, to submit a form rather than a string. First of all, rename the views products create upload.cshtml, then modify it as shown. So let's do both of these. Right. 
So we want to go to Views, Product Images. Close a few of these. There's Product Images, and we're in Views. Just close a little bit of this stuff up. All right, so Views, Product Images. And we're going to rename the create to upload. Now I'm going to hit enter, and it may or may not ask, should, no, it didn't. Usually, um, if there's anything that the code has been referencing, you'll get a, a dialog box that will come up then and say, do you also want to update any of that? And you always want to say yes. Whoa, I'm at 41 minutes. All right. I'm just going to stop it right here and pick it up in just a couple.